to today is uh, execute contract to assess emissions of a linear generator. And uh, we have a staff report. Favorite topic. All right, good afternoon, Chair, uh, member of the committee. Um, I'm Sam Chow, I'm a program supervisor in the demonstration group. I'll be bringing you the next three items. So this is the very first one. So the first one is to execute contract to study emissions off our linear generator. Next slide. By way of background, linear generators, as you guys know, is a unique power generation device that, that's alternative to internal combustion engines. It extracts the heat from any fuel to drive a piston in a linear motion. And this has the potential for higher efficiency and lower emissions without the need for after treatment compared to an internal combustion engine. But doing so, this unique operating characteristics means it can operate virtually any fuel so long it provides the heat to drive the piston. The new generator has been extremely popular for backup and prime power generation, but also in microgrids for building electrification and most recently EV charging. Despite its popularity, there's still a very limited deployment to date and additional studies are very much needed to understand its full emissions profile over all variety of fuels and its long-term emission performance over time. Next slide. So the photo proposal, we have partnered with UC Riverside and Hylion uh, to conduct a comprehensive emission study on, the car on, on Hylion's Carnot generator. Uh, Hylion is one of the two um, uh, existing mini generator manufacturers and you have heard their presentation at Tech Committee uh, earlier this year. Uh, for the phase one of this study, UCR would go on site to Hylian's uh, Development Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, to collect gaseous, PM, toxics, metals, emissions on up to five di different kinds of fuels. For the second phase, um, UC Riverside will tag along Hylian's first commercial development uh, deployment in the South Coast Air Basin to conduct initial and periodic testing of the Hakano generator on site for a period up to two years. Next slide. So the cost for conducting the testing is 423,000. Hylian is providing some in-kind contributions for R&D, the cost of the generator, and the testing support for a total project cost of 2.6 million. Next slide. Yeah, the recommended action is to uh, execute a contract with UCR to conduct the testing. I'll take the question on this item. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that report. And do we have any questions? Uh, Mayor McCallum. Thank you very much. Just a question. Uh, are we going to do the same with the other generator or it's not needed or what? Yeah, good question. So we previously had an item before the Technology Committee working with Mainspring and Gas Technology Institute, and they'll be deploying a unit at Cal State Long Beach. And we'll be doing testing on other fuels and durability testing over time. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> other questions or comments? Supervisor? I, I'm fascinated by the newer technology, but to take two years to study it so we know we can actually support it and deploy it, is any way to use for a year period and kind of push through the testing? Yeah, so the two-year period really is for the long-term durability testing. The initial tests will look at their earlier fuels and point to any problems with those additional fuels for the emissions. Um, the idea here with this test, we're getting in very early with this company as they before they start to manufacture these on a large scale. So they're willing to make tweaks to these units if there's things found on the emissions profile that need to be adjusted. And that can be done in a very quickly period of time. For example, I mean, Larry and I just had an MSRC yesterday, and we we directed to use some of the funds for this new clean energy. But the time period for submittals are six months. So, if we don't you know if we could, this is an option. Well, currently under eleven two point three, um, we have natural gas approved as a fuel for these. Um, so they would have to meet those requirements for natural gas for NOx emissions. Um, but we don't know what the other fuels look like for these linear generators. So, um, you know, they always could be, as long as they meet 11.2.3, they can always be installed um, without using those other fuels that everyone's interested in. And we'll provide interim status reports during this time period also. Great, thank you. And Wayne, just another suggestion too, is I'm finding out through all the different organizations I'm a member of, 
you know, trying to spread the word about this new technology going and who can apply it. There's not a lot of knowledge within governance about these newer technologies or even exposure to it. I know we have the TAC committees that you can also go through, but on a broader scale, um, maybe some on our websites that we're working with these partners. These are some of the new technologies that we're experiencing, even though they're not ready for prime time, because as you know, a lot of the studying takes a long, long time or staff assistance to help some of these entities uh, plan um, to get, we used to get this out of SCAG, which I know is not our area here as much, but planning grants. So we could use, you know, planning grants for our cities. There's a lot of changes for our municipal, you know, fleets, our county fleets, our infrastructure that we need to have some of that technology be part of those planning, maybe something we could look at, how do we get them to be up to speed on the technology? Thanks, Supervisor. Uh, any other comments or questions? Okay. Uh, seeing none, do we have any public comment? Uh, there are no hands raised. Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and close public comment. And we'll just ask the scope of the study uh, looking at uh, different uh, fuel types. Is there something that is a different type uh, than what's seen on main mainspring or in highly on that will be measured and studied uh, than usual. Um, well, the the fuel types of interest right now, uh, natural gas, you know, particularly renewable natural gas would be the first one. Hydrogen's very popular. Liquid fired petroleum gas (LPG) for short. And then there's other twos that we left open. Um, so perhaps it might be something like ethanol which you know, we have a lot of ethanol coming into the basin for fuel, gasoline fuel mixing. Um, and the price of ethanol is really good right now. Um, so we have some options right now on the other two fuels to study out of those five. So fast forward, is it that we want to and see kind of a hierarchy of efficiency of, uh, of, from emission standpoint, what uh, is kind of the highest, best form? Yeah, well, the market's really gonna drive the the fuel being used in these, right? Because you want to use the lowest cost energy source typically. Um, so that's going to be one of them. There's other factors that come into play, such as availability, and then also other programs like, you know, a, either tax credits or credits under the LCFS program that the state administers. Uh, so it's really going to be, you know, initially right now, we see natural gas as being the prime source of fuel for these. Where do you see the, the final best? utility of this study as far as the, the type of uh, data or information that we'll be gleaning from this? What, uh, how would you best describe that? Um, well, we hope to, one, first find that all these other additional fuels, the emissions are excellent <laughs> um, because we know there's a lot of interest in power generation, not only for these EV chargers, but we're seeing data centers. And so the need for electric power generation right now is just every day, if you, you know, in the news, it's it's increasing dramatically. So uh, additional power sources are very popular right now and gonna be for the next 10, 15 years. So that, that's an important thing to understand what these emissions are. And if I could just add, Chair Rodriguez, having South Coast AQMD do an emissions profile analysis is pretty much a golden ticket for a technology or a company that's had the ability to have us look at it. And especially if the results come out positive like we expect, that's gonna be something that every air district, every state is gonna look at. And that's why we generally have a lot of uh, receptivity and cooperation in doing these kind of projects. And I'd just like to note to what Supervisor Hagman had said earlier, you know, we do have the tech demo and I think you recall when we had the parking lot where we bought a lot of technology. Aaron and I have talked about having a bigger showcase that would highlight some of these technologies with a very broad outreach. And so these are the kind of things that we could talk about and really increase what I hope would be the awareness, the adoption and the deployment of those cleaner technologies. We certainly had an impressive uh uh version this past year uh hope we can get 
even more uh, awareness to the supervisor's point uh, through the expo, or uh, perhaps uh, we can explore uh, and some of the best practices and emerging technologies that we're seeing and bring that uh, to uh, a SCAD forum uh, sometime next year, but we'll maybe look at that offline. Uh, so we'll go ahead and call for the vote today. Move the item. Second. Okay. Supervisor Hagman. Second, aye. Mayor Locke Dawson. Aye. Mayor McKellen. Yes. Board Member Padilla Campos is absent. Supervisor Wayne is absent. Chair Rodriguez. Yes. Motion passes four ayes. Uh, before we move into item three, uh, do we have a any upcoming update on the Cal State Long Beach study for uh, looking at main, the mainspring linear generators? Yeah, well, um, that particular study is also co-funded by the California Energy Commission. We're still under contract right now. We expect an update and start of the project next year. Okay, thank you.